In this video, I want to talk about synthetic put options. What's a synthetic put option? A synthetic put option is a strategy that creates a payoff that looks like a put option, but without actually buying a put option. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, why not just buy the put option? Well, put options are not as popular as call options. So you may want to buy a put option. And you buy a put option because you think the price of the stock is going to fall. But one may not be available for you to purchase. So how can you create this payoff without actually buying the put option? Well, you can do that by taking a short position in the stock and combining it with a long position in a call option or buying a call option. So let's see how that looks. Start off with, keep in mind, a short sale is the case where you sell something before you own it. And then what you do is you hope to buy it back later at a lower price. So we always talk about buying low and selling high, but you don't have to do it in that order. This is the case where you hope to sell high and then buy back at a lower price. How's it done? Well, a short seller calls up his or her broker and the broker will borrow shares for you to sell. Once, you're, once you've decided to close out your position, that's called covering the short position. So you'll go out and buy shares and replace the shares that you've, that you've uh, borrowed. All right, a short sale is like buying a put option, except there's a lot of, in fact, there's unlimited possible losses. So many investors prefer the put option to the unlimited loss possibility of the um, short position. If you buy a put option, you have limited possible losses. Let's take a look at the payoff picture. If you sell short Microsoft stock for 79 and 7 sixteenths, you're going to get a payoff that looks like this. This is the price you sold it for, so you're hoping the price will fall so you can buy it back at a lower price. And if it falls to zero, that would be the best case scenario. You would be able to essentially buy it for zero and sell it for 79 and 7 sixteenths, and you'd make 79 and 7 sixteenths per share. Now you'll notice that there's an arrow pointing down here. There's no limit to how much you can lose. Why is that? Because the price of the stock theoretically can go to anything. The price of the stock could go to uh, 100, 1,000, 10,000. As I'm making this video, Berkshire Hathaway stock, uh, the company that Warren Buffett runs, is selling for 170,000 a share. So imagine that you sell something for 79 and 7 sixteenths and had to replace it, had to buy it back at 170,000 a share that would be an enormous loss. Okay? In, in theory, you'd get a margin call um, long before that. But theoretically, there's no limit to how much money you could lose. Now, if you combine the short stock with, um, with a call option, what you do is you get a payoff picture that looks like a long put. So, for example, we're going to assume that you purchase an October 90 call option. So that means that the option expires in October and has an exercise price of 90. And you're paying 3 and 3 eighths for this in addition to your short sale. What's going to happen is you're going to eliminate the unlimited possible losses. So a good way to see that is to construct a worksheet here with the payoffs. And you do each one separately. What's your, what's your payoff for your short position in the stock? Well, if the price goes to zero, you sold it at 79 and 7 sixteenths, you make 79 and 7 sixteenths, right? You buy it for zero, you sell it for 79 and 7 sixteenths. If it goes to 25, if it falls to 25, you sold it at 79 and 7 sixteenths, you buy it for 25, so you make 54 and 7 sixteenths. If the price happens to go to 100, 
you've sold it for 79 and 7 16 but you have to buy it back at a much higher price and so you wind up losing 20 and 9 16 how about your call position remember that the call has an exercise price of 90 so as long as the price is below 90 you're not going to use it you're simply going to uh, lose the premium of three and three eighths okay once it goes above 90 for every dollar it goes above 90 you make a dollar so if it gets to a hundred a share you're going to make ten dollars minus the three and three eighths that you paid for the call option so if we sum each column you can see that uh, your your um, payoff if the price falls to zero is not 79 and 7 sixteenths it's 76 and 1 sixteenth because you have this this premium that you paid for the call option likewise uh, if the price falls to 25 instead of making 54 and 7 sixteenths we have to subtract out the cost of the call your net profit is 51 and 1 sixteenth and you can do that for each one of these columns let's see what that looks like in the diagram we said that if the price falls to zero, your profit is 76 and 1 16th. The cost here is 13 and 15 sixteenths. That's the most you can lose if the price falls to 90, or I'm sorry, if the price rises to 90. What's happening there? If it rises to $90 a share, it flattens out. Why does it flatten out? Because for every dollar it goes above 90, you lose a dollar on your short position, but you make a dollar on the call option. So the call option limits your losses. That's why we have this horizontal line here. Now, you kept losing money until you got to 90 because the 90 call was not worth anything. Now you could have gotten greater protection by choosing a call option that had a lower exercise price, maybe an exercise price of 85. The problem is, is it would have been much more expensive to buy a call option with an exercise price of 85. But again, notice that this payoff picture looks like you bought a put option, even though you never did buy a put option. So if a put option is not available, and you want to create a payoff that looks like a put option, then what you can do is short the stock, buy a call option, and you'll get a payoff picture that looks like a put option. And that's what we call a synthetic put.